Hi, everyone. This is Jeff Prazen from Interactive Brokers Podcast Studio. My pleasure to welcome back to our studio for our monthly podcast, a woman McBride and Dimitri Pagomatic from uh, Marky Chameleon. Hey, guys. How are you? Hey, Jeff. Thank you for having us. Hey, Jeff. Always a pleasure. Thanks for having us. Uh, yeah. And we just finished up a great webinar on tracking at the money straddles and just happy to have you guys, like you, like you always do, swing by the studio afterwards to take I don't want to say a deeper dive, I guess maybe a little bit of a different dive into it for our podcast listeners. And for our listeners at home, like you can always catch the webinar, whether you signed up for it or not, and just go on our website, look for contributors, look for Marky Chameleon, you can find all their previous podcasts and webinars under there as well. And I highly recommend it, especially if you're interested in the subject. But just to get, get started, let's start from the beginning. What is a straddle? And, and what do you mean by at the money? Yeah. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, an option straddle, it's a strategy where you're simultaneously either buying a call and a put on the same strike and the same expiration, or you're selling the both the call and a put on the same strike and the same expiration. And that that at the money, the straddle is the strike price that is closest to the spot price. So you'll never you're not going to always find an exact strike that equals the stock price, but we say that at the money, the closest strike, ideally an exact at the money would be where the stock price equals the, the strike price. But we look at the closest one and that that's a strategy that is looking to capitalize on volatility, stop volatility or stop movement in either direction. That's why it's a straddle because you have both the call and the put. At the money straddles, why are they a relevant trade versus say other straddles? What does the pricing about these at the money straddles show us about the market? Yeah. The thing about the at the money straddles is one, they tend to be the most liquid options that trade. Not always, but usually typically you'll see that's where a lot of the liquidity and volume tends to center around the, the strikes near that at the money. And the at the money straddle tells us the market's anticipated stop movement. It's like the best representation of all the options out there of the expected volatility and stop movement between now and the expiration. We have other strikes, you know, that are either wings or tails, and you'll see a skew in those implied volatilities. And those strikes will allow First of all, we'll price in the potential surprise movement, like when we get the tails or the wings, the gap move. And it also allows us to gauge the market's expectations, how the volatility will change as the stock moves towards a higher or lower strike. So you have that skew in there. A high, higher implied volatility would imply that the, the, the markets are expecting more volatility as the stock like moves to those strikes, lower, lower implied volatility from the out the money is the market's expectations that the volatility will slow down. But that straddle is really um, where if we just wanted to derive the market's current expectations of volatility and stock movement from here is a good representation of those market expectations. Just to really simplify it for our listeners, if the stock is trading $50 and the 50 straddle is trading for $5. The market's sort of expecting a $5 move. It doesn't know whether or not it's going to go up or down. It's not saying it's going to go up to $5, but it's saying it's expecting it to either be 50, between 45 and $55, correct? Yeah, exactly. That the market is like a, like a yeah, exactly like a 10% move in, in, in either direction. So that's where, the, and that's where the, that straddle would break even for the buyer and seller. So that would be the market six expectations. What time frames are you tracking for expirations? Are you looking at these straddles like six months out or what what's the kind of time frame that traders find yeah. useful? Yeah. So um typically the ones though that we track and create create analytics and reports on are the straddles that are close closer to expiration of shorter term. Or if we, or even if we have a, maybe a straddle that's a monthly, we'll track it from week to week. And 
the idea behind it is that if you want to see how well the markets price potential volatility or stock movements, we look at the shorter term because we have more certainty. For example, in the next week, we could anticipate some of if, if the stock may have earnings. Usually that will be announced in ahead of time that week. Um, ex-dividends or if there are certain events like economic events that we can that are expected to be released the markets already anticipate no no more in the shorter term than the longer term so how well are the market do the markets price in volatility and potential stock movements we look we look and track that in the on a week to week basis what can the traders do with this pricing information? Like, how are they using it for trading decisions? They, it's, you know, it sounds like, okay. It's worth five bucks. Like, you still yeah. don't know whether it's going to be 55 or 45. So what are some ways the traders are using it? When we track the performance and analyze the performance of the straddles, a couple, a couple things that, that we'll, that we would ask ourselves and you know, what, what some certain questions you may ask yourself is that, well, the straddles tend to underprice or overprice actual volatility? Like that'll be an important question to know how well did the straddles price actual stock movements and what did they error by? That's an important thing whenever you're, because what, what is a straddle? It's a forecast, right? It's a forecast of what some, a, a forward looking or future volatility or stock movement. How well does the market price or over the long term or on average? And how much can it error by? Is it right on the nose? Is, it, is the error small or is it big? Because anytime you are trying to trade a, a risk asset, you want to know the potential risks and the potential rewards and how well did the market actually price actual volatility, the actual stock movements. So that's an important question. And then also if you're trying to measure the straddle and you're looking at the current price. You may want to also compare it to its history to see, are we on the low range, the high range of historical pricing? We're are in the middle. So those are types of questions and market risk assessments or even looking for different opportunities that you may ask yourself and why you would want to look at, at the straddle and its, and its historical performance or historical pricing. So not only are you looking forward to these short-term straddles expiring at the end of the week or however, but you're also seeing how accurate they've been in the past, correct? So in other words, okay, I, I know that stock ABC, the straddle is priced at $5 and looking at past performance, it always seems to be priced pretty right or versus stock XYZ and the straddle's priced at $9 and looking at past performance, it's been all over the place. So I don't even know about the market even knows what's going on with this one. Is that kind of yeah. a, a way to summarize this? Yeah, exactly. How well is the, the market price relative to where if we take a snapshot at the start and then we wait and look at what transpired and then we'll compare how well did it do? Did it tend to be like really overpriced by a lot and how often or underpriced by a lot or how often these are real, real questions that you are probably asking yourself before even commit, committing to some type of strategy or risk. But if you're interested in stocks, like just say you're, you're interested in say Apple, you're obviously looking at Apple straddles, but is this a case where you can compare it to say other like companies straddles and see, can you see where it's at? And, and if so, how is that helpful? What does that tell you or what can it potentially, I should say, what can it potentially tell you about the underlying and, and the straddle and, and so whether yeah. or not it's a good or bad trade? For an example, a lot of people are familiar with a pairs trade or pairs strategy where you're selling, let's say one security and buying a similar security because you think that one security is overvalued versus another security that's undervalued. And if you're holding them in some kind of a ratio that they might converge or they, or they tend to trade around some kind of a mean in relation to each other. The same thing with straddles, 
where you could look at two very similar or securities that tend to, you know, have a s- similar beta or, or relationship to each other in their movements. And you may notice that one straddle is looks undervalued relative to another straddle that looks overvalued. And that could itself be a potential pair strad strategy or even a basket of stocks where you have these undervalued straddles versus overvalued straddles that may it may be a candidate for a pairs trade or portfolio type of trade. So that's also very common strategies as a professional where you're trading baskets of, of securities. Yeah, very, very good point to compare those cross asset analysis. And, and, you, and you mentioned, you know, you just mentioned underpriced versus overpriced straddling. You mentioned it a little while back. So I want to dive a little bit deeper into that. And what kind of, what can that show the investor about the underlying, if the straddle yeah. is overpriced or if it's underpriced, like what, what can they derive from that? Yeah. When we, when we look at underpriced or overpriced, we'd have to first define relative to why is it like relative to history, relative to how other straddles in the market are priced, but let's just say we, that we define it relative to history. So an underpriced straddle could imply, it could imply two things or maybe multiple things, but one is that the, let's say in the case of an underpriced, that the market's expectations for volatility or stock movement going forward is, is is lower than typical or lower than history suggests. So volatility will go down or be more muted and vice versa for an overprice. It could also indicate just the order flow itself can, if there's a big imbalance, let's say to one side where there's just more, for example, and for whatever reason, that itself can push the markets down, right? Push the implied volatility in the straddles down because there's so much a dealer is willing to hold at each level, right? In inventory, because the, the more he holds, the bigger the risk is. So all the workflows go in one way, the dealer prices themselves will get pushed low. So it, it's, and, and it may not necessarily be because the the expectations of volatility, there could just be stra- strategies themselves out there that require, you know, more selling or more buying to hedging and, and, and rolling positions and so forth. So th- those are the types of things that straddles could, an underpriced and overpriced straddle could indicate. Do you also take an account outside events such as like earnings or news releases when tracking the, the, the performance of straddles or is it just in a vacuum where, okay, it was $5 last week and it's $5 this week or it was $5 last week and it's $6 this week and it's yeah. $5 again the week before, but it, it's... Yeah, no, definitely. That's a very good question. We could start out and usually you'll start out just looking in general across mm-hmm. all events. Does it tend to underprice or overprice? or correctly priced with low error, but then you could look deeper and say, what if I just took some of some type of situations out like earnings and analyze them on their own? How well did those strategies or like maybe around earnings, maybe without earnings, the markets are very good at pricing, but around earnings, they're not, but you have more uncertainty or maybe around other types of events or like Fed meetings or so forth. So, so maybe those types of events, you could see different types that the markets are pricing by a wider range than typical. And it's important to, to know that. You know, we talked about the straddles and looking at from week to week and looking at also tracking historic performance as well compared to relative performance. But I'm curious, is it also something where yourself or other traders might look at the market's performance kind of, for, I mean, the straddles performance from like day to day, in other words, like how is it Monday to Tuesday or Monday to Wednesday or Tuesday to Friday and trying to see or pinpoint when it may be the most 
fair valued versus maybe it's always undervalued on a Tuesday. Maybe it's always, you know, overvalued on a Friday or something like that. Is it something you guys look at or is that, am I going too microscopic at this? It's, no, definitely. And, and that is something that we look at and our tools allow you to measure those. And the idea there is that there might be some anomaly there based on certain days of the week. And it could exist, for example, because there, there are strategies out there that in options require rolling or, or require reestablishing positions or rehedging positions. And they could be done or typically on some kind of weekly basis, based on you know, the Monday or Friday, or as you get closer to the end of the week, you might see you roll. So when you're rolling a position, it could tend to push certain under push options to be underpriced when you have a lot of people getting out of one option and getting into a different one. It'll impact the, the markets themselves. We definitely look at that because it, it's conceivable or possible that even during something going on during the week, and it could be something on a rolling basis or something that on a consistent basis, options or straddles tend to be underpriced because of the, the flow or overpriced. Yeah, I was, it's interesting to see how you can track it just from not only day to day, but also from week to week, and then also use this historic performance as well. Are there any other final thoughts you would like to leave our listeners with? I think that if you're looking at options trading, and, it, and especially if you're looking to analyze options from the perspective of, of volatility, stock movement, having those tools that go beyond just looking at an implied volatility versus realized volatility, because you're really like just deriving these measurements from models and depends how you run those models, tracking the actual performance of straddles. And we could look at it from different perspectives of the, the, how the straddles perform or how would the strategy of, of a straddle rehedging. So we, we rehedge, we trade it's Greek. So we track that as well, where it, as the stock moves by the end of the day, we look at the new delta, rehedge it. And we do that for the week to see how the realized volatility perform versus the high volatility, you know, it becomes an important tool in your, in your, in your toolbox, especially for volatility traders. So something to keep in mind, something to take a look at in your overall you know, risk analysis tools. Yeah, no, this was great. Uh, the webinar earlier was great. I really appreciate you guys coming by for our listeners. Uh, you can catch Market Chameleon. Uh, every day on YouTube, their, their YouTube channel at the start of the market. Um, it's always a great place to go and get information as well. And again, next month, always great to have you guys in here. And I will talk to you soon. Thanks All for right. having Thanks, you. Jeff. All right. Thanks, guys. The analysis in this material is provided for information only and is not and should not be construed as an offer to sell or the solicitation of an offer to buy any security. To the extent that this material discusses general market activity, industry, or sector trends, or other broad-based economic or political conditions, it should not be construed as research or investment advice. To the extent that it includes references to specific securities, commodities, currencies, or other instruments, those references do not constitute a recommendation by IBKR to buy, sell, or hold such investments. This material does not and is not intended to take into account the particular financial conditions, investment objectives, or requirements of individual customers. Before acting on this material, you should consider whether it is suitable for your particular circumstances and, as necessary, seek professional advice. Options involve risk and are not suitable for all investors. For more information, read the characteristics and risks of standardized options, or ODD, which may be accessed through the link found in the podcast description page. Multiple leg strategies, including spreads, will incur multiple transaction costs.